Have you ever told a snowball lie? You know, the kind of lie that starts off small but then gets bigger and bigger. The kind of lie that goes on for so long it becomes impossible to stop telling it. If a lie went on for years and if telling the truth meant destroying your whole life, how far would you go to keep the truth from coming out? On the morning of Monday, January 11, 1993, a house caught fire in the French town of Puebu saint mouins Firefights dragged out the unconscious form of Jean-Claude Ramond, a respected doctor who worked at the World Health Organization. Unfortunately, his wife and two children did not make it out alive. Ramond's parents were discovered dead that very same day, shot to death in their own home. Police began to theorize that Ramond had connections to high-level crime. They began to look into his past to find potential enemies, someone who hated him badly enough to butcher his entire family. What they found instead was a lie that went back 18 years. Jean-Claude Ramond had a relatively happy childhood. He grew up with two loving parents on a farm in rural France. His father was a local timber manager and his mother was an affectionate homemaker who was often ill. Jean-Claude later said that his family taught him not to lie, but on the other hand, his mother's shaky health made him worry that any disappointing or traumatic news might lead to her death. He grew up trying to keep these values in balance. Don't lie, but don't say anything upsetting either. Jean-Claude only shared his worries and troubles with the family dog. If you're thinking, aw, a dog lover, how bad could he be? Just hold that thought. Hold it tight. Jean-Claude went to prep school where for the first time he saw the kind of high-flying lifestyle enjoyed by the wealthier classes. Some theorize that seeing the wealthy parents of his friends is what inspired Jean-Claude to pursue a medical degree. He wanted the lifestyle of a respected doctor, in spite of the fact that he didn't actually like the idea of touching sick people. In 1971, Jean-Claude finished his baccalaureate program. His final essay was titled, Does Truth Exist? After his baccalaureate, Jean-Claude enrolled in medical school where he knew his distant cousin Florence was studying to be a pharmacist. He had been in love with her since the age of 14 and he eventually convinced her to go out with him. Uh, they were only distantly related, so I guess it's fine, but still, it's pretty French, right? So here's the thing. Jean-Claude Ramond actually did totally fine at medical school. He wasn't a genius, but med school is really hard and he passed all of his classes and exams. Until that is, he reached the final exam of his second year. It's unclear whether he slept in deliberately or by accident, but he missed the final test. No problem, Jean-Claude just arranged a makeup exam. Then he missed that one too. Later, he said it was because he fell down the stairs and broke his wrist. But even if that's true, he could have taken the exam verbally. So, what's the deal, Jean-Claude? Was it the pressure? Exam stress? The idea of sick people haunting his dreams and becoming waking nightmares? Whatever it was, Jean-Claude Ramond could not enroll in his third year of medical school. Instead of admitting his failure, Jean-Claude told everyone that he passed his exam. While he could not enroll for the third year, there was no rule against him re-enrolling for the second year over again. So that's what he did, every year for 11 years. He maintained his student status by re-enrolling in the second year of the program. Then he showed up for all the classes his friends were in, pretending to progress through medical school. He even showed up before and after exams so everyone thought that he had sat them. By all accounts, Jean-Claude Ramon did all the work it takes to become a doctor. He just never actually took the test. Of course, even with the very lengthy process of going through med school, there's only so long you can pretend to be a student. So eventually, the lie graduated. Jean-Claude Ramon told everyone that he was a full-fledged doctor working for the prestigious World Health Organization. He married Florence, who worked as a pharmacist, and they had two children, Carolyn and Antoine. On the outside, Jean-Claude Ramond was a great father and husband. He often left home to fly to Geneva to do research for the World Health Organization. He was inventing new medications for research trials and bringing home souvenirs from his trips. 
He was an attentive father too. He insisted on keeping strict boundaries between his work and personal life, never inviting colleagues home and never having his family visit him at work. In fact, Florence never met anyone else from the WHO and sometimes joked that her husband might actually be a spy. Of course, Jean-Claude wasn't really a doctor and he wasn't really working for the WHO. In fact, he was unemployed. He would often drive to Geneva and hang out in the public parts of the WHO building, sending mail, drinking coffee, and picking up pamphlets to bring home as work material. Other times when he was supposed to be traveling the world, Jean-Claude would drive to an airport and stay at a motel, reading guidebooks for the countries he was supposedly visiting and calling his family to let them know what the weather was like. Now how could Jean-Claude afford to support his family with no job? At first, it was through the sale of an apartment that his parents had purchased for him while he was in school. That bought him a couple of years. Then, when a family friend was diagnosed with late-stage cancer, Jean-Claude told him that he was working on a new, cutting-edge experimental treatment through the WHO. Jean-Claude told the cancer patient that he could smuggle some pills out of the trial, but it would be costly. Desperate, the cancer patient paid Jean-Claude 60,000 francs for what turned out to be sugar pills. He died a year later. Jean-Claude didn't live a frugal life. He moved his family into a large house, bought a BMW, and lived lavishly. He told everyone that his work through the WHO gave him connections to some excellent investments, netting him an enormous 18% return every year. He offered to invest money on behalf of his friends and family. They eagerly handed over their cash, and Jean-Claude never invested a cent. He kept it, and then he spent it. As if all of these lies weren't enough, Jean-Claude also got himself a mistress named Corinne Auerton, a mother of two. When Corinne sold some real estate for 900,000 francs, she gave the money to Jean-Claude to invest, on the condition that she be able to get it back whenever she wanted. Of course, there is only so long a pyramid scheme like this can last. Eventually, Jean-Claude's father-in-law asked for his investment money back. Jean-Claude's bank account was empty, and he was unable to comply. Shortly afterwards, his father-in-law fell down the stairs and died. Conveniently, Jean-Claude was the only witness. Then things started to escalate. A friend of Florence told her that Jean-Claude wasn't listed as a WHO employee, and Florence began to get suspicious. Corinne, Jean-Claude's mistress, became the second person to ask for her money back, but Jean-Claude had already spent it. In fact, at this point, he had spent over 2.5 million francs that he was supposed to have invested from various people, and he had been lying to everyone for 18 years. Like in medical school, Jean-Claude had a choice to make, come clean or cover up. He couldn't bear to come clean. Telling his wife and parents that he wasn't really a doctor after all of these years was unimaginable. So he went with option B, cover up. First to go was Florence, the person who was closest to the truth. On January 9th, 1993, Jean-Claude took a rolling pin and beat Florence to death in their bed. He then took the rolling pin to the kitchen, cleaned it off and climbed into bed next to his wife's body and went to sleep. The next morning, he got up and watched cartoons with his two kids. Afterwards, he spiked their drinks with barbiturates. When they complained of feeling ill and got into their beds, he shot them both. His daughter Carolyn was seven years old, and his son Antoine was five. Now there were only two people left that might uncover Jean-Claude's secret, his parents and Corinne, his mistress. After killing his children, Jean-Claude purchased a handgun and silencer. He went to his parents' house and had dinner with them. Then, he shot them both. The family dog was distressed and kept running back and forth between the bodies, so Jean-Claude shot the dog too. Once he had cleaned his gun, Jean-Claude called Corinne and invited her to a dinner party. She agreed and he picked her up that evening. Here's when Jean-Claude's plans finally went awry. He drove Corinne to a rural road, then told her to get out of the car and close her eyes. He had a surprise for her. But instead of the jewelry that she was expecting, Corinne was pepper sprayed and tased. Jean-Claude tried to strangle her with a cord. 
Amazingly, she managed to fight him off. At that point, Jean-Claude tried to play mind games, claiming that he was just defending himself and she had been the one to attack him. He also said that he had cancer, which was causing him to lash out. This was all obviously nuts, but they were in the middle of nowhere, so I guess I can't blame her for pretending to believe him and letting him drive her home. At any rate, whatever Corinne did or said kept her alive, so major props to you, Corinne. You're a survivor. When Jean-Claude made it to his family home early on the morning of Sunday the 11th, he spent three hours watching TV and then three hours calling Corinne and insisting he didn't want to kill her. Then, nearly 48 hours after murdering his wife, Jean-Claude Ramond spread gasoline throughout his house, took a handful of sleeping pills, and then lit a match. So here's the thing. Jean-Claude claims that he did this because he was suicidal. He realized that all the killing hadn't actually solved his problems. The truth was going to come out. Overwhelmed and depressed, Jean-Claude wanted to die. Of course, that's his story. Other people, for instance, judgmental YouTube commenters like myself, might point to some more conflicting facts. Like the fact that Jean-Claude closed his bedroom door, blocked the bottom of it so smoke couldn't come in, and opened a window after he heard the fire engines, essentially doing everything he could to prevent excessive smoke inhalation before passing out. He didn't swallow the same potentially lethal barbiturates that he had fed to his children. Instead, he took some very expired sleeping pills. So, did he really have a death wish, or was he trying to stage an arson and pretend his family died in the fire? Let us know what you think in the comments. I know where I stand. Anyway, even though he managed to live a fake life for 18 years, Jean-Claude Ramond sucked at covering up murder. Pretty much as soon as the bodies of the kids were discovered, police realized that fire doesn't result in gunshot wounds. It also became clear that Florence and the kids had died before the fire was ever started. Plus the whole murdered parents and dog thing, and plus the whole trying to kill his mistress thing. Obviously, I don't want killers to get away with murder, but come on. Jean-Claude Ramon just sucks at crime. It's embarrassing. When Jean-Claude woke up in the hospital, he completely denied killing anyone. He claimed that armed men had come into his house, shot his kids, and then set fire to everything. He claimed he had no idea his parents had been killed or who would do such a terrible thing. Every time new evidence was presented, Jean-Claude made up a new story. After seven hours of this, he finally broke down and confessed. Psychiatrists testified that Jean-Claude Ramond had narcissistic personality disorder. They stated that during his interviews, he was more concerned with appearing intelligent in front of the real doctors than in showing remorse. It took a jury five hours of deliberation to declare Jean-Claude Ramond guilty. He was sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole for 22 years. From prison, he was quoted as saying that after 18 years of constant lying, he had never felt so free. That 22 years is up. If he was free before, he's double free now because Jean-Claude Ramond is currently out on parole. Thanks for watching Beyond Crime. If you enjoyed this episode and want to support more true crime content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment to let us know what you thought of this case.